Hey, you've reached the V spot. I'm Vicky. And I'm Velvet. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. We have a special guest today. Today our guest, though, I know we say our thing is we're relatable, not educational. Today we're also going to be educational because this is very uh, interesting, especially for women. Uh, Today we have Shailene with us. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Thanks for being here. So nice to meet both of you. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, so I am a physical therapist, um, and have been for, um, over three decades. I actually don't like to admit that, but, um, and I also have a very keen interest in women's health and everything that encompasses that. My, um, initial training was just on pelvic floor health for women. Um, and then I've done a lot of postgraduate courses kind of furthering my knowledge on that both online as well as practical and I just kind of feel at this point in my career my passion is to help educate other women Mm -hmm. and men Um, but as a 54 year old menopausal woman I feel that there is not enough information out there even if we know what to look for so I was really excited when (laughs) my friend of like over 50 years introduced us and we have this opportunity to chat that friend would be Carmen my neighbor who I who I like to frequently talk about because she's one of my faves um so tell us a little bit so I we spoke yesterday for a little bit um and everything you said was brand new knowledge to me, which blew my mind a little bit because I feel like I know things, but clearly I don't. So first off, this word pelvic floor, mm-hmm. what is that? Well, it's interesting because every you know person that I get on my table comes in for pelvic floor therapy, but doesn't like I have, they, they, they're like, well, what is my pelvic floor? So even just that, I'm not sure how people are, are finding to come and find a pelvic floor therapist. So your pelvic floor is just a, a group of muscles that sits in the bottom of like your your pelvic area or your hips or kind of like between your belly button and like your crotch, basically. Your hip bones, which are like, you know, like at your waist, that's the top of your pelvic floor. And then like your butt bones that we're all sitting on, that forms part of the bony structure of your pelvic floor. And then you have this group of muscles that sit in the bottom of it. So think of it like almost like a hammock that then houses your bladder, your vagina, as well as your rectum, and then everything else that kind of sits on top of that. Right. So it's a very important structure when you think of stability or control within your body. But we just, I mean, unless I'd have gone and done specific pelvic floor physio training, I mean, we didn't really learn that much about it even in school. So is that not covered in just regular well, I mean, you know somewhat in like our general anatomy and for sure like I went to school over 30 years ago so there was like right. no research and I mean it was kind of oh this worked for somebody so let's do that and women's health is becoming a very emergent mm-hmm. um, topic in the research and as more and more people are talking about it and you know mm-hmm. like so a great platform like yours to help you know educate people and have them understand that maybe something they've been feeling in this area that they didn't even know where it was you know there can be help for it you know things like pelvic pain painful sex you know inability to control urges to go number one or number two Mm -hmm. all of those things can be helped there's many things we can do now there may be some people that you know require surgery or some other kind of intervention which as pelvic floor therapists i mean you know we have a scope that we can work within and then it's referring on to other places but if people don't even know that there's a problem yeah you know like you don't know what you don't know and I think that's kind of last night in some of the conversation we'd had like I mean there was three of you sitting there and we're all kind of you're a little bit younger but you know we're all kind of in the same age range we've been around the block a bit we've all had kids and nobody talked about that stuff absolutely not and it's still not being talked about Mm -hmm. and you know as a healthcare person for the last 30 years like in healthcare we're all doing the best that we can And so it's not that somebody's not doing their job or not telling whatever. It's just like, you know, you kind of pick what's the most important. And then, you know, maybe are people getting information online, which, you know, we all know sometimes what we find out online is not always correct. So it's really important to me that, you know, we try to figure out how to educate the public versus seeing everybody after the fact. Right. You know, I want every you know, teenage girl or 18 year old girl to know what a pelvic floor is and know, you know, what they can do 
at 18 to help prevent problems that might happen before they have a baby or after they have a baby or once we go through menopause because we know there are a lot of changes in our body with hormone changes. I mean, that's the big thing right now in menopause. Yeah. Hormones, hormone replacement therapy. And that's like, I'm not touching on any of that because I don't understand it. Right. <laughs> You know, and, and just in my own journey for myself, you know, even how do you find that information out? So I would like to somehow figure out, you know, how can we be talking more as women and talking with daughters, talking with our friends, having conversations like we had last night yeah. about just like this is an area nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody. We don't is, talk about our vaginas. No, no. And a lot of people don't even know what their vagina looks like. Yeah. So like everybody should get a mirror and look down there yeah like see what it looks like get you know know your body mm -hmm. you know we 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 spend time you know making sure our skincare routine is really good so our face looks good and we put on makeup or we spend money going and getting our hair done like why don't we spend time on areas that we know just I mean, based on changes we go through in our lives as women, we know there are going to be changes in our pelvic floor. I mean, there's changes all over your body. Right. You know, I said like are, are changes in just your skin integrity, changes in your soft tissue integrity, changes in your muscle integrity, just as we age. And if we don't use something, we lose it. Right. Right. Like, you know, I don't think I've ever had a six pack. <laughs> so, you know, like, and I'm not going to keep doing sit ups, but it's the same with our pelvic floor. If we're not aware of it, then how can we, you know, you have to acknowledge it and you have to start somewhere. So I would encourage everybody listening to this or watching this, take, you know, take your hand mirror out of the bathroom drawer and take a look at your vagina. Take a look at it while you're sitting. Take a look at it while you're standing up. Look and see what it looks like. Mm. So then you have a place to start from. And, you know, my big, every woman I feel should go see a pelvic floor therapist. Don't wait until you're you know you're peeing your pants or you're incontinent out of your bowel or your bladder right or you've had painful sex your entire life and think that's normal right I mean, that's a whole other conversation yeah. we could have that you know i remember listening to somebody and they said like why do we all think that men know what they're doing in sex mm -hmm. you know as a one we're like oh what are we supposed to do and am i supposed to have an orgasm and what's that supposed to be and you know is it supposed to be painful am i supposed to lay down am i supposed to be sitting up like and and i I don't know if I can, I mean, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Of course not. I mean, I came from a generation where, you know, I didn't even want to tell my mom I had my period. Right. Yeah. So it's like, heaven forbid, I'm sure not going to ask her about yeah. an orgasm. Absolutely not. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, as we go through this journey and, you know, I kind of feel like having done this for long enough, it's just as a physio and seeing the people that come across, you know, in my clinics or just even like as my own personal patients, People want this information. Mm -hmm. They like, but they don't know. They don't they know don't that they know. even need it. That's you know, the thing. Like, like, yeah, you didn't know. I had no idea. Carmen didn't know. Yeah, you know, I taught her how no, to nope. go to the bathroom the right way this morning. Like, <laughs> yeah. just and and just simple little things like that empower us as females. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a whole other thing we could talk about. Female empowerment. We can. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, we can. why do we? Why do we feel that we can't? ask questions right. about that or you know even when we're going for a regular checkup you know like why isn't there information about this still at this time you know it's 2023 like why are women suffering in silence and so to that's my big thing totally. i don't want anybody i want people to understand yeah. that there's help out there and if we can't help you as pelvic floor physios, like I was just on a course yesterday in, in um, yeah, the city. Explain about that course, because this was interesting too. I never heard of. So it was a course on um, uh, fitting and teaching people about a pessary, which a lot of people have no idea what no. a pessary no. is. No. <laughs> so a pessary is a, um, like a thing, for lack of a better word, that you put into your vagina that helps to hold up all of your your pelvic organs. So with age or after birth or, I mean, any number of things could cause a pelvic organ prolapse where, you know, like all of your, either your bladder is coming out your vaginal wall, your rectum is coming out, your cervix is coming down, your uterus, like, and people think, if you've never looked at your vagina before, how would you, you know, know yeah. if that's happening or not? But it, I mean, it becomes a quality of life issue. 
people feel like like literally like their 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 insides are falling out right and so a pessary is it's just like a little silicone it can be like a little like a, there's like a ring or there's this cube thing and like you literally just it's like you stick it up like a tampon and it holds everything in place and then we teach people how to like use it properly and like you know follow all the cleaning instructions and whatever so it can be taken in, in yes and out. some of them okay. you have to take like you can't have sex with some of them in yeah um and just for people to know that that's something, you know, think of a of a new mom that wants to get back exercising right. and wants to empower herself because now, you know, your whole life changes after you have kids. You're no longer just you. Yeah. So there's that whole psychosocial piece. And every time you go to run or do exercise, you pee your pants and you feel like your vagina is falling out. Right. So a pessary will help people like that be able to have the quality of life that they want while seeing a pelvic floor therapist if that's like indicated but also just to feel empowered to have control over their own body and do what they want to do yeah you know because let's oh like having kids i have four kids and nobody prepared you for that no the mental part of being it's like oh i just want to have a baby and you know everything's going to be great and then all of a sudden it's like wow like nothing's no, the same down yeah. there mm-hmm. i've got this baby attached to me 24 7 that wants to eat like you know i'm my nipples are sore and cracked like my stomach's not going back down i'm, I'm scared to go to the bathroom yeah. because yeah. like i don't you know especially if you have stitches or mm-hmm. anything so you know nobody prepares us for that yeah. then you want to go do something and well, i'm peeing my pants all the time or i can't control this and then you know it's just this down spiral mm-hmm. and I just want women to know, like, there's help out there. Right. And most people don't think of a physio. You know, you ask people, like, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Until, pretend you didn't talk to me last night. Mm-hmm. What do you think physical therapy is? Oh, it's. I, I would have thought it was all about, like, muscle. Muscles. Like, I went to physio after I was in a car accident. Like, I got rear-ended. Yeah. Like, that type of, never, never anything in that region would I ever think physiotherapy Usually would be required for. Usually you associate it with, like, an injury. Right. That and you're, s- yeah. And so that's where, at this point in my career... You know, and it's going to, I mean, there's not enough gas in my tank. And I hope the generations that are coming after me, we need to be more proactive. Mm -hmm. Because many people think, you you know, I've heard that a thousand times. Why do you come to physio? Well, if you've been injured in an accident at work or in a car. And I'm like, oh my God, there's so much more we can do for people. Mm -hmm. And this is a big prevention piece. But also just, you know, teaching people how to move their bodies. And when Mm -hmm. it's safe to move your body after you've had a baby. When it's safe to move your body after you've had surgery or if you've had some kind of illness. And I think as a profession, you know, and and it's getting better for sure, that we're realizing we can be so much more proactive than reactive. I don't want to leave this profession. And I get emotional about it because I'm like, God, like, you know, like I'm 54. How many more years can I do this and Mm -hmm. have people you know, still think I'm credible enough to listen to. But, you know, even in my own patient population, just seeing how many women I'm having coming in that are my age that have raised their kids and have had their career and we've done everything that we were supposed to do. And now it's like, oh my God, like, I don't know who I am. I can't Mm. move my body. I can't squat down. I can't pick something up. I'm sore every time I get out of bed. I have no energy because my hormone levels have tanked. I'm going through this menopause that nobody seems to understand. You know, all I want to do is go home and go to bed. And the last thing I feel like doing is exercising. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, to provide a place for people to get the information and have a support group like I I feel really strongly that anybody that is in the physio field that is in women's health and I've you know been around the block a few times I think that this is an area that if anybody is passionate about it you know 50% of the of the population is female Mm -hmm. so we can reach and help we all say you ask everybody why'd you go into physio so I can help people I mean that's the first thing everybody says I want to be able to help people this is something we can do to help people before they even know they have they need help. Right. So right. that was a long drawn no, answer, but no, you, I I find you fascinating. Everything you say, I'm always like <laughs> waiting on every word. Um, okay, so you you mentioned the word prolapse. So this is a word that I had never even heard of until last year. I didn't realize oh, really? that this was a thing. Explain prolapse for us a little bit as well for other people that maybe don't know. Okay, so again, we've said we're educational, but I'm like, don't want to be liable if I say the wrong thing. But, um, you know, so a prolapse just means that, you know, things aren't where they're supposed to be. So gravity 
pulls everything down, Mm. right? And as we age, we're on this planet, and so the pull of gravity brings everything down. Now, after we've had, um, you know, children, or if you've had surgery, or like whatever, happens in your pelvic floor, your pelvic floor, the muscles, the actual organs, your tissues, are not gonna be the same as they were before. So you may have like loosening or um, like lack lack of just um, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like structurally, like the walls of your vagina are not gonna be as tight or as right. strong. Now right. that doesn't mean that, you know, you're not gonna be as tight when you have sex, it's not that. It's just that, you know, so now like your bladder can start to come down through the top. So the anterior part, front of your vagina. So it may look when you're bearing down or even when we assess somebody, you'll see like something kind of coming out of your vagina. What would that feel like? For a lot of people, they don't feel anything. So like I have a little bit of that where when I bear down, like you can see where part of my bladder like comes out my vagina. So it's coming down. That was like, really that's really personal. Like, yeah. right, like right, like so, so like right the opening of the vagina. Yeah, you so, can actually see the like the, yeah. some. So if you don't know the anatomy, you're gonna yeah. be like, okay, well, like I don't really, I don't get yeah. that. Get your hand mirrors out. But yeah. you can you can see where when you bear down, like something comes down. Interesting. So you think about you know all the times you bear down. So don't let me forget to talk about going number two okay. because that's important. <laughs> but you know I don't have any symptoms none like i have no no and you know when i'd put in a tampon or i mean i mean i don't have to do that anymore but you know having sex like none of that like it doesn't bother it doesn't me. interfere and there was with it, like yeah. no change like from my partner like it's mm-hmm. it, it's 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 important to me to know that i have that which i knew i had it but it was just not and i've had four kids right so i'm like well okay like well, i'm okay with you're that. lucky that it's just yeah yeah right <laughs> but so you think you know then you could also have where like your rectum or like the end <laughs> oh, sorry the end of <laughs> your <laughs> um like so your large intestine like where your poop comes out so that can come up against the back part of your vagina so then you would see, you know, so then we would look and you can you can tell whether it's like the back part, the front part, or your cervix or your uterus can come down. So like the, so that would be like the, you know, like the strength of the length of your vagina is just not there. So when you bear down, then you, you see, you see your uterus. So for sure, like pelvic floor therapy is going to help increase the ability the structural ability of your pelvic floor to kind of help keep all of that up so that there's going to be support for it but then a pessary you know for for people that that pelvic floor therapy is not going to help is not going to do as much because it bothers them point or or just depending on on what the issue is because there could be a lot of things you could have like a muscle tear in your pelvic floor like there and so i don't want to get into that but You know, some people find that wearing a pessary all the time is great. Like, you know, we sized it and then you had to get up and walk around the room and do jumping jacks and, you know, and like I was fine, but I didn't really have any symptoms. But I will say doing jumping jacks, I'm like, oh my God, I actually don't have the urge to go pee. So I'm thinking I'm going to get myself a pessary just to like, to to try to see, is that going to make a difference in things that I didn't even know were a difference? Is wearing one... Would wearing one be pre- preventative of things happening, or is it just to help with things that I don't have know already? enough to answer that okay. question? I okay. Don't wanna, but so mm-hmm. you know, if if you think realistically, well, maybe mm-hmm. you know, is it a way to help, help keep, keep everything up, up yeah. so that then you could work on your pelvic floor control? Right. You know, but it was interesting to me. Like I said, I've had four kids, and I use the smallest size of pessary to go in my vagina, which right. I'm like, what? Like, I mean, I'm five ten. Right. I would have thought I'd need like the big the one. Big, yeah. <laughs> right. So you know, you can't tell because of the size of somebody or how many kids they've had. Right. Or you know, if they'd had a because you know, people are like, oh, I have no problems with my pelvic floor because I've had a C-section. Well, you've still had the weight of that baby on yeah. your pelvic floor for forty weeks. So you can't, you know, and I've I've tried to look at differences, kind of um, things that I see when I assess people, and like places where I'll find where they're, you know, tight or sore, don't have the same muscle control. And I've tried to look at age, handedness, you know, type of job, how many babies have you had or not had babies, C-section, vaginal delivery. And I can't, like, there's 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 really no, no, Hmm. like, you can't just say, well, if you've had, you know, two vaginal births, you're going to have this. And if you've had four vaginal C-section or four vaginal births, it's this. And if you've had a C-section, it's this. 
because we're all different. So you can't, you couldn't just look at a vagina and be like, oh, C-section. No. Oh, she's had three no. natural oh, births. No. Yeah. No. I okay. thought for sure you'd be There'd able be a to difference. No. Yeah. And, you know, so then you look at, like, I mean, no different than if you, you know, felt somebody's neck. You know, if I assessed each one of our necks here at the same level, I'd probably find something different in all of us. Right. So, you know, just because we all have a vagina doesn't mean we all have the same vagina. Not all vaginas are the same. No, like, (laughs) but if more people, I I just, my whole goal of kind of the last part of my career is to get women, and I don't want this to sound like I don't care about men because it's not that, but as a woman that, you know, has experienced a lot of this Mm -hmm. or, or just kind of like learned it all. And then like last, we're talking and like, you guys knew nothing about this. And I, I sometimes think, well, geez, like maybe it's just my ego and I just, you know, think mm-hmm. nobody's going to care or whatever. And I realized last night, it's like, I almost feel like I'm doing a disservice if I don't figure out some way to help get this information out right. and help other physios. Like, how do we market it as a group of people around the world? Because this mm-hmm. isn't just, you know, Canada. Of course. It's, it's, it's women all over. And how many women are sitting at home not doing anything outside of their house because they don't they're scared to leave because yeah. they're worried mm-hmm. they're going to pee their pants. Yeah. Or they're not having sex because they have so much pelvic pain, like it's just uncomfortable for them. Or not exercising. Or not exercising. Or, you know, just like just thinking that, well, I've had my kids and this is just how it's going to be. So, you know, at least I got my kids. I don't want that for women. Because when you get to be my age, it's like, wow, I love my kids. I've raised them. You know, I've still got one at home. But like I want to start doing now for the first time in my life what I want to do. do. And I don't want all of this stuff that's, you know, we talked about last night about being late. Okay, so I've, I'm in menopause. Well, that doesn't mean that my life is over and I should never have sex again and all of my pelvic or- organs should fall out and I should totally. just be okay with that. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you I know? think a lot of people, though, think they hear menopause and they think of it as a, oh, old. Yeah, right. Like, like you're automatically old now. You're in menopause. So yeah. People, I think and like that, write you off almost, right? Almost. Oh, she's, she's, she's in menopause. She's yeah. at that a certain age. Yeah. So then yeah. I find that women almost don't want to talk about it. Right. Out of like... Don't want, I don't want to be it. old or I'm, yeah. I'm mentally crazy now because i'm going through menopause so even with that like even perimenopause and menopause so many symptoms of that i was unaware of like i had no idea i thought it was just me and i mm-hmm. think that's part of the problem how too young is, it starts right and i yeah. just even i think even if you're older even with the incontinence and that type of thing, I think a lot of the time they're just like, oh, it's just happening to me. We don't mm-hmm. realize it's like a, a woman issue. It's not. Or we think it's because because we had a baby. And that, but there's nothing right, and there's you can, nothing do, about you can do about it, right? Like, just hopefully it doesn't get too bad. So like even yeah. signs of menopause. Can you go through some of the signs of menopause that or I, because s- peri- or perimenopause, because I was blown away by some of the things that I actually, I said last night, I thought I was just crazy. Like I legitimately thought I was going crazy. But now I'm starting to think, oh, maybe it's not just... Well, and I think the whole, so first of all, I mean, you know, the whole idea that society, I think, has put that in, that once you hit menopause, you're old. Mm-hmm. I remember a long time ago watching, some, and I didn't watch a lot of talk shows or TV, but I remember Oprah Winfrey, like, and this was like, she's been off the yeah, Oprah for show for yeah. however long. So I don't know, maybe I was in my 30s. I don't know. And she said just to the audience, like, you know, I'm choosing to embrace menopause because it is happening right whether i want it or not and listening to oprah like embrace it because the next side of it Mm. is you know i'm not through it for sure but like it's kind of nice not to have a period anymore Mm -hmm. right yeah hot i mean i don't have that many hot flashes anymore the first one i had i was 46 years old and I'm, i honestly thought i was having a heart attack right really because i'm like can i'm too de- young can you describe what it feels like because i think a lot of women don't know what what it feels like well i think it's different for everybody but i remember laying in my bed and so like i was divorced and so i was in my this big huge king size bed by myself which is a whole other <laughs> topic. but, but that you know it's interesting <laughs> laying there in bed and I had just like a cotton like nightgown or whatever. And I remember like feeling this, like it was like this fire in my chest. Uh, yeah. And so I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm having, I'm having a heart right. attack. And it's an would. internal feeling. Oh, and it like, it was like this thing just like. like a, <sighs> I've heard that it moves up. Yeah. Like, and I just, I, I'm sure if I would have had a mirror, which I don't have a mirror on my ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> but if I would have, yeah. yes. but it would be Ceiling kind now. of like, I'm sure I just got red all the way up. Yeah. 
And I, I honest to God, I thought, what am I supposed, like, what do I do? Do I yell out for one of my kids? Because I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah. Maybe wow. this is what a heart attack feels like. And literally, as quickly as it came on, then it was like, then I wasn't hot anymore. And I was like, oh my God, I think that's a hot flow. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. And I probably had three that week. And it wasn't in the middle of the night. It was more right. kind of, you know, like five in the morning. And I was like, oh my God, this must be what perimenopause, like I'm starting right, to right. go through perimenopause. And I can't say that, you know, my brain was foggy or whatever else, because I've always had so many things on my brain. I forget shit all the time. So it's like, that wasn't really. <laughs> I, I, thought could... I thought you were going to say, because I've always been very sharp. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been sharp, but I forget. I mean, I've always just had to juggle a lot of balls. So yeah. I couldn't use that. And then I guess I kind of started to notice like my period wasn't as regular so I was like, well, okay, like, you know, maybe. And then I'm just trying to think. I think it's been like two years. It's funny because, you know, when it starts, you're kind of like, oh, my God, I got to remember this. I would say it's probably two years since I've had a period. So at this point now, I'm classified at like I'm in menopause. Because right. it's kind of you go a year without having your period. Right, okay. I heard that, yeah. And, you know, do I still sometimes get hot flashes? Yeah, and I'll be sitting in front of a patient and all of a sudden I could just... <laughs> and if I'm wearing a sweater, I'm just like, it's okay, I'm just having a hot flash. Right. So I'm just taking my sweater <laughs> off. And yeah. within a minute, you're fine. Yeah. So I, you know... And, and being okay to have that conversation in front of the patient instead of them looking at you going, oh my God, why is her face turning so red? And she's like right. beating right. The sweat. Right, right. And it's okay. Just be honest about it's it. It's okay yeah. to not be okay. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Like, I mean, I'll put it up. I don't have any sex drive right now. But that just happened. It seemed like that. Like I had it and then I didn't have it. Right. And we've been very open in our relationship, like about kind of, you know, and I'm like, like I'm trying, but I just like, and it's not you, it's me. But then we kind of go like, okay, well, this is like, I'm a woman. So it's normal that I'm going through this. So why do we have this big thing where we have to be like, oh my God, like, it's not you, it's me. Like, yeah. it's my fault. Yeah. Like, right. it's not my fault. No. It's just, and I'm choosing not to do the hormone th just because I, I mean, I got histories of cancer and, and I just, I don't feel, I don't feel yucky. Hmm. Like I think about that Oprah thing. I have to go through this because there's going to be something way better on the other side. Right. And having raised four kids and, you know, you know, <laughs> it's like, come on, kids, like eventually you can't keep calling me. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. like on the other side, I get to be this great woman who's, you know, had this wonderful life and raised my kids and whatever. And I'm going to feel I just know that on the other side of all this there's something that's way better mm -hmm. in terms of how I'm going to feel, how I'm going to feel about my body. And yes, did I go through like, shit, I gained like, and I, again, didn't know. Like all of a sudden I was just like, I just felt like fluffy everywhere. Right. Around my belly, my face. Right. All my bras were too tight. Mm -hmm. Like. Is that from, a, is that from hormones? Well, like, like I, that's part of menopause. Yeah. I mean, but you know, like they talk about weight gain, but it wasn't like. I thought, oh, wow, I'm going through menopause and I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to be gaining weight. Right. And then it was just kind of like, oh, God, like everything's too tight. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, and then you start to feel bleh and then your brain kind of starts mm -hmm. to bleh and mm -hmm. then you have no energy. So we go like this mm -hmm. and yeah. then let's throw COVID into the middle of all that. Right, right. So, you know, for me and I know and I'm pretty self-aware and pretty self-motivated. So it was like. I have to get my butt moving. I can't lay in bed. It's okay that I don't have a sex drive because that's normal. It's not that I need to take a bunch of pills or whatever to try to get because my body is going through a change. Right. And I think if maybe we could all embrace that. And because I mean, again, I get a lot of people come across my beds and, oh, I just don't feel good. And, oh, I have no motivation. I don't even want to look at my partner and whatever. And, and I'm hearing it from a lot of women I, but I'm also yeah. hearing it from a lot of men and I think if we could just all you know like hey I feel the exact same way and right. you're not alone because right. whatever reason it is that we think we have to deal with all this by ourselves 50% of the planet are women mm. why can't we talk about stuff like this more why yeah. you know when we get together why can't we talk about her vaginas and how shitty we feel about not having a sex drive right. or what we want with our bodies in terms of what we want to do when we have sex. Right. Like, because everybody's different and there's nothing wrong with that. 
and you know, I sometimes think there's shame around it's us very tar- being, yeah, absolutely. you know, absolutely. or you know, Carmen and I have talked a lot about this sense of obligation. Like right. we've got to act a certain way, and we've got to be this mm-hmm. certain type of person to be appropriate and prim and proper. Meet you expectations. Can, you know, you can be prim and proper and have a wonderful sex life. Like those two right. things don't the have same. to yeah. be yeah. <laughs> on opposite sides of the spectrum. Right. And I think, you know, going through menopause is te- like, you know, I, I honestly, like I'm not going to just go all rogue and whatever, but I kind of don't really care anymore <laughs> what people think. Like you get to also... That's an that's, age thing too, I think, yeah, right? Like but I just think like, that's the yeah. good that's, thing, that's a yes. wonderful thing yes. about yes. the whole brain change in menopause. Yeah. You learn who you are. Yeah. And it's okay if you have a hot flash. Because you're still here on this planet and my friend isn't. Right. So the ability to actually go through an age and have longevity. Because it's not just about, okay, now I'm done through menopause. Okay, good. And I don't have to worry about my diet. I don't have to worry about work. Like I've made it. No, as women, menopause doesn't just mean that we roll over and curl up in a blanket because we've raised our kids and now like this is it. Right. You know, we should be able to go out and do things. We should be going and working out. We should work on lifting weights, this whole idea. But we should learn that when we're in our 20s, yeah. or when we're in our teens, because our bone density takes a huge nose dra- nosedive when we're in menopause, to the point that now we're so much more at risk for a fracture, which puts us at a higher risk for actually dying. Right. So why didn't somebody tell us that when we were in our 20s or in, in, in a high school gym class? Yeah. Why didn't we learn about lifting a weight or carrying something? Well, because we don't want to get bulky. It's not about getting bulky. Right. It's about putting resistance through our bones and working on our muscle mass. Because when I went through menopause and, you know, I've had some health issues. So I've had to, I mean, I've lost weight. And so that's been good. But it's like, oh my God, now there's no fat on my body. It's like, where'd all the muscle, muscle go? go? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I went through this whole chain knowing better. Like I knew what I should be doing and I wasn't doing it. So I'm kind of celebrating in the fact that I have a good pelvic floor because right. at least I've got, <laughs> yeah. got that thing right. Got my floor. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think everybody, you know, you're going to go through menopause differently yeah. than I am. You're going to go differently than she is and I am. Like, it's everybody's own journey. But I think being able to be okay, you know, it's kind of my thing. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. It's okay to not have a clue what you're going to wake up like tomorrow. You know, am I going to be bitchy tomorrow? I'm going to feel like I'm going to be sad. It doesn't matter because we're supposed to be going through this mm-hmm. change. And I think not fighting it or we're, oh, what's, what are they going to say? You know, mm-hmm. sometimes I said to my kids, I was like, well, at least I'm not bitchy. Well, <laughs> you know, but it's okay yeah. because we're supposed to. And if maybe people talked about it a little bit more, like I feel like this, oh my God, I feel the exact same way. Right. You know, having a, a group of people that kind of can be your support as you're going through this and not just, you know, your healthcare practitioner, or your doctor or a counselor, like actually having a group of you real know, life people, relationships. Yeah, yeah. Like that you can go, oh, today has just been a really crap day for me. Like yeah. I've had 20 hot, hot flashes. You know, I have no energy to get out of bed and I just can't remember even why I walked up the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and just to be able to have have some connection with other people that are going through the same thing or can be your support system. Yeah. And, you know, generationally, you know, yes, like mothers and daughters and whatever, but it was so different when our moms went through this and it's going to be so different when our daughters go through Mm -hmm. this. I think finding, you know, your, your kind of your tribe. I mean, so many people talk about that, you know, find your tribe of people that you might not even know that are your tribe, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that if you can get some connection and kind of, we all go through this together instead of feeling like we're having to swim upstream the whole time yeah just because you know your husband or your partner or whatever like and, and honestly they just don't understand it yeah because their bodies are not the same as ours i do think men go through some form of menopause that isn't just buying a sports car and finding you know a trophy mm-hmm. wife i like <laughs> <laughs> i've i've said to you before i yeah. feel like they go through like an ornery period where they just start getting like i've noticed with kyle mm-hmm. i've said it on the pod before that yeah he says things that he would have never said before like makes comments and stuff i'm like kyle you can't say that like mm-hmm. it, it's almost like they develop an insensitivity yeah. totally. to like whim, almost, it, women almost women yeah. almost right like they can just say it i'm like and he's not trying to be rude but i'm like you what are you doing you can't say stuff like that it's Mm -hmm. like they go through a i almost wonder like sometimes bit of a tangent but like if they 
like with i was talking to ryan about how he's way less patient now like he's Mm. just way more like abrupt about things or whatever and i find that men will blame it on like oh i'm just been tired at work or i'm this or i'm that like it's never like a biological biological or physiological thing that they're going through because it's it's men they're men they don't go through that yeah yeah. It would. They're never affected mentally. It's right. always a reason for it, right? right? So, right. or women blame ourselves, right? Right. Oh, it's our relationship is. You need to work on a relationship mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like with men, we kind of excuse it. Totally. And even going back to this thing you said, find your tribe. I think that's so huge with women our age. Is that it falls into the category of not giving a shit anymore mm-hmm. and realizing who those people are for you and sticking close to them like quality over quantity where i think in your like 20s 30s for sure it's more of a so many friends and you know so many play dates and all that type of thing and i think there's a huge switch especially as your kids get older where you're just like you just need your people Mm -hmm. you need like two is better than 10 if you're not getting what you need from the 10 and even being able to be vulnerable but like this like we were saying last night that sometimes you're in a group of women and like maybe three of them would be good talking about Mm -hmm. their vaginas, but the other three wouldn't be. So you're not going to talk about it because you know the other three are not going to be okay with it, right? Mm -hmm. So even having one person in the room that makes fun of you Mm -hmm. right, or mocks you for a second or just makes light of something, that shuts it down for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. It's not tolerating that either. Being like, no, no, this is what we're talking about. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Get over it early. And if you don't want to be here to (laughs) discuss it, yeah. So through menopause and perimenopause so you touched on so there's um sex drive just disappears which i wasn't expecting that's i'm definitely perimenopause i wasn't expecting that and i thought i i thought i hated my husband (laughs) and had no sex drive because i hated my husband Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean and it one had nothing to do with the other i actually how what made me actually realize it was tiktok thank you tiktok but uh somebody did a, a lady did a tiktok on signs of perimenopausal and one of the things that I didn't realize was like I thought something was wrong with like my perineum like vagina Mm -hmm. like anus area Mm -hmm. because I had no feeling in it there was Mm -hmm. numbness that's gone now but apparently that's also a Mm -hmm. it is something really do you so again I'm not gonna I know no I know you're not like it but yeah you know like all of your like tissue changes happen down there because of changes in hormones right again everybody's hormones like we're all so unique in that which is you know why I think there's this huge big thing this you know now that it's safer for women to have estrogen and the ways that we can get it because before it wasn't right so I think that you know now it's 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 having healthcare people being educated on how to do it and what signs or symptoms are and then what you would do to help people. And then kind of like, how long do you wait for that? Do you go and see? So then that, my advice on that would have been if somebody would have came into me and say like, I just have no feeling here. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we do a pelvic floor assessment. We look at what the anatomy looks like down there. Is there some, you know, problem in the tissue? I, you know, like yesterday and and I should have known better. I mean, I've had to sit and do this three or four times with my leg because I got this, honestly, a pain in my butt. And I've tried to troubleshoot it myself as a physio. And I'm just like, God, like, you know, I got osteoarthritis in my hip. Like, you know, I'm trying to do yoga. What's wrong with my hip? That's just what happened to me when I knocked your mic. I was like, it's a pain in my hip. So when I got, <laughs> like when I got assessed yesterday by this lady, because I don't have people treat my pelvic floor because I don't, I don't have any symptoms. Right. But she came in and found a trigger point and hit it. And I was just like, oh my God, that's my hip pain. And so last night, it was so much easier for me to sit. I was like, oh my God, like I can cross my legs and I don't have a problem. And now today I'm just like, oh God, it's back. But like that pain in my hip, I'm fairly confident is from my pelvic floor. So huh. w- someone having a pelvic floor exam, what does that look like if they came into you and said... Qu- I'm glad yeah. we can talk about this <laughs> pelvic. Great question. Yes. <laughs> because a lot of people come in and they have no idea. I would have no idea. So what I know. it is um, usually like an hour. So you have an hour with a pelvic floor therapist and you go into a closed door room. So people never go anywhere for a pelvic floor exam that is not a closed it's door. It's not a curtain or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It should be closed door. Yes. Um, and you'll answer like a series and everybody has kind of their own little idiosyncrasies in their assessment 
forms, right? right. We all, when we go to, to take our initial training, they kind of give you like a template of what, right. like what you should be looking at, questions you should ask. So things like, you know, like, what are you here for? You know, how many babies have you had? If you've had any, um, what were your labors like? What was delivery like? Did you have any issues when you were pregnant? Kind of what do you eat and drink? What is your diet like? Are you high in fiber? Because then that's going to have um, issues with like your bowels because a lot right. of people have issues with their pelvic floor that actually cause issues with like going number two, which, you know, a lot of us, well, it must be something with my stomach. A lot of times it's related to your pelvic floor. So we look kind of at diet. We look at, you know, any kind of um, like significant like gyne history. So, you know, if right. you had... Um, any issues other than pregnancy if you had any surgeries um uh, history of like stds utis bladder infections like kind of looking at basically just general health as it relates to anything that kind of sits in your pelvic floor then if there's anything else you know if you've had back pain or hip pain or what i mean those things are all can be indicative of things that you would start to look at and then we talk about um like how many times a day do you go to the bathroom what does it look like do you have to push do you have to you know is it a straight stream does it stop and start wow. same for number two okay. you know do you have to push to have it come out what does your poop look like you know i'm telling like, everybody should be looking at their poop you should you should look at what color it is how it's formed mm -hmm. you know how often do you go is it diarrhea or is it like you know rabbit turds is it thin sausage like you know, I've gone through a whole health journey in the last six months that I knew nothing about what was going on in my body. And it turns out I had a liver problem hmm. because like the color of my poop was not right. And I mean, I should know better. I'm hmm. a healthcare person. <laughs> so, you know, and look at the color of your pee. Does it smell? Like those can all be indicative of other things going on in your body, even right. outside of your pelvic floor. Right. Um, and then, you know, we talk about sex talk about you know is it painful what part of it is painful if it is then i have to dig into you know has there been any sexual trauma and that is you know it's 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 hard yeah you know you meet somebody for the first time and within 20 minutes you're talking about yeah. something that's very very because we have to know some of right. that yeah um, and then, you know, we sign consent and do whatever. And then, you know, we kind of like look at like kind of your back and your hips and then go in and do an internal external viewing kind of of your whole vaginal, like your pelvic floor area, and then do an internal exam where we come in and literally it's kind of almost like, like a clock come into your vagina and then come around kind of from six to 12 and then 12 to six feeling what it feels like because there are differences from one side to the other Just like inside like the pressing against the wall of your vagina right inside yeah so like my fingers so i'm you know you want to come in and try to feel the cervix mm -hmm. you want to come in and feel all any muscles that you can feel you it's hard to differentiate one muscle like sure. it's this muscle or that muscle um, and just feel how somebody can contract and relax. And then, you know, based on kind of what their problems are. So like for me yesterday, hitting that one trigger point in my like butt cheek, it was like, oh my God, that's my pain. So then you work on just trying to get rid of that like tight spot. So I always, work on, you mean like massage it out yeah. type thing? Okay. So I always tell people like if anybody, because do, do you guys know if you have any tightness in your pelvic floor? No, you would have no, no idea. No. If I say your pelvic floor, you're still probably going, what? Like, what is she talking about? So I have like a model, like a, a pelvic oh, okay. model. Yeah. So I can show people mm -hmm. like, you know, the, here's your bladder. Here's your, so it's just like, it's like a skeleton when you go in, but yeah. it's got all of the muscles. And then even from the outside, like people don't know that you don't pee out of your vagina. You Some think, people don't know, know that. There's, there's yeah, people who don't know. Right? Yeah. You know, people don't know where your clitoris is. Right. So when you look, it's like, oh, and that's my perineum, that's my butt. So right. just even that, you can sometimes see people go, oh, like finally. This makes sense. Yeah. I kind of like know what it looks like down there. Then maybe it's not as scary to actually go look at your own. Yeah. Because you now know what you're looking at. It's not just like this, oh, what is all this? and then <laughs> what's all this noise and then you know then it then it becomes like what was the problem yeah. you know if somebody came in and it was painful sex a lot of times i can't even get in to like the vaginal opening there's so really? much tightness and that's because so the the it is actually one big muscle right your pelvic floor is no, just no, no it's not it's like three the main there's three main muscles but they're all muscle 
Yeah, but okay. you, like I mean, when you're coming into your vaginal opening, and like how sorry, how you were showing us last night, how long is actually your vaginal canal too? Which because I thought I think it's only like five inches or something, isn't se- it? It's seven to ten centimeters. Centimeters. So oh, that centimeters. Would, yeah. yeah. So you know, and and like I don't know how long my finger is. I should probably measure it, but most often I can find somebody's cervix if they have one, right? So if they've had like a hysterectomy or what, like sometimes okay. you it won't be there, but. Like it feels like the tip of your nose, but like just like so right just up, like you can straight find that. So you like can the feel it. of a finger, and I yeah. feel like that would have been a much larger, longer area before you could hit a. Well, because then you start thinking about having sex. Ex- exactly, mm-hmm. that's and it's why. Like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah. So yeah. where does everything go if Ex- it's more than exactly. seven to ten centimeters? Yeah, right. So you know, and 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 just like being able to have those conversations and people are like oh my god like I didn't realize like that was so sore there or that would explain this or that like it's a very empowering which is why I love doing it as a physio I love everything I've done in my career and I've done a lot of different different um like certifications and you know I love treating like bones and muscles and nerves are kind of my thing on the outside but because pelvic floor is so unique Mm. and because people don't know like if I said you know bend your elbow okay there I can bend my elbow and I see Mm. my biceps comes up and okay now straighten out your elbow and let your biceps relax like everybody can kind of track with that then if I say okay I want you to contract your levator ani which is like (laughs) your pelvic floor people are like what like how do I even do like I push in do I push out like how am I supposed to because it's very hard to like you don't see it and so what does that mean like you squeeze your legs together and then you cut like it's very very foreign because we've lost the visual yeah like even that you know the sensory component we like we don't know like if i hold in a fart like is that the same thing like so being able to come in and show somebody and feel the muscle and say okay now i want you to contract Contract so lift you know like squeeze and lift my finger and then like oh is that it is that it like you know but then they might be people can actually squeeze your finger and lift it up Mm -hmm. well so like you know pull it in but but you also want them to do it without tightening up their butt and squeezing their legs together so that's that's what a kegel is People are doing kegels wrong i think right a lot of people so you think of muscle physiology is to maximally contract a muscle you have to maximally relax it so think if you've ever gone to a gym and you know you're lifting weights like you know, you're not going to do a bicep curl like this right well a lot of people at the gym yes might, some but, do. <laughs> you know you and, and it's and it's a lot harder if you come to full extension of your elbow which totally stretches out your biceps and this is just basic muscle physiology. Then in order to get the best contraction of my biceps, I get it from fully um, elongated and then that's gonna give me the maximal ability to contract. That's just muscle physiology. Right. So you think about that in your pelvic floor. But if I said to you, okay, I want you to maximally relax your pelvic floor so you can do a really good pelvic floor or Kegels contraction, you'd look at me and go, well, I don't even really know what you're asking. Do I tighten up my butt muscles? Because right. that's a lot of people just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to tighten my butt. So being able to actually be in there and spend that time with and having people feel what it's, you know, like, okay, there, that's the relaxation. Well, your, your rose thing last night, explain that. That made sense yeah. to me. I actually was like, oh, as we we're all sitting there doing it under our blankets so we're all like <laughs> Practicing. oh that's actually what it feels like so so it's you know I would say and this has just been my experience so I'm not going to speak for any other pelvic floor therapist but I find the majority of the patients that come to me cannot relax their pelvic floor we're all literally walking around like we're like this right right because like and, and then if something is weak it becomes tighter because it just can't function so it just it's like it turtles right so when you come in and you 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 have somebody like understand what you're trying to do then the cue that I give that has worked the best for me like there's I mean a ton of different ones the one course I was on I said this and everybody's like oh my god I've never thought of that I'm like well what do you guys use to tell people like (laughs) that just seems to make sense (laughs) so if you think of you know lifting your pelvic floor so think of like you're tightening and lifting so think of like tightening so we used this analogy last night, like your vagina, if you think of like your vag- vagina, the seven to 10 centimeters, like a piece of cannoli or, or manicotti, uh, 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 yeah. like <laughs> the <laughs> pasta, like kind of like the tube. Yeah. Okay. So that for any pelvic floor therapist out there, I'm sorry if I've butchered that, but it makes like, it, it makes that sense. made sense when yes. we were explaining. So think of like tightening up the bottom of that cannelloni and then you're squeezing all the way up. So you're trying to like squeeze and pull my fingers up. So that's the cue I give people. 
and get them to try to do it a couple times and oh, I don't know what to do. Everyone listening is doing this right yeah. now. 100%. <laughs> well, so I'm sure all of we us are, are right? Yeah. <laughs> so then, so it was like, okay, I'm not going to talk. I just actually came up with that pasta analogy last night. So okay. I'm going to start using that because that's actually a good <laughs> thing to show people. Like this visual. is what it looks yeah. like. You all know right? what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. So then if you think of lifting up, so like lifting your pelvic floor or contracting your pelvic floor in order to like bring my fingers up, think of a rose coming into a bud. So when you're doing the contraction or the lifting, it's like you're lifting up coming into the rose bud. And then when you relax, it's just opening up the flower because you don't, it, relaxing doesn't mean you push it out because right, then that's yes. still contracting your pelvic floor, right. right? So if you just think of like just, opening up or even thinking like the flower opens and then there's just a bunch of sparkles that come down like whatever you want to you know Ooh, sparkly. i know right that would actually be a really good it's analogy beautiful right? it opens and sparkles there's <laughs> our there's our episode title right <laughs> but you think of just like it's it's just it's opening to relax mm-hmm. because and that is the hardest thing in my experience for people to get like, and then, and then you might be able to do it a couple times and then it's kind of like that motor pattern or that control of that muscle, then all of a sudden it doesn't know how to relax. Right. You might get like two good contractions and all of a sudden it's like, you know, because I get people, I get them to hold for two and relax for five. That's just been clinically what's worked well for me to get people to understand what to do. And so they'll do it for two seconds, that come into this rose bud and then open it up and it takes sometimes five seconds to be Hopefully able to just ugh, like yeah. let it relax. But then sometimes after like the second or third contraction, it just stays up like the bud. So then we take a bit of a break, you know, 15 seconds. And then, okay, now let's try again. Lift, because remember, maximal relaxation happens after maximal contraction. So I want them to, because most people can contract with that. Okay, if I'm going to contract and I I show, okay, we're contracting and then we're just going to let it relax. Right. So once we get that, and I feel like somebody's good with that, if it takes them, you know, three or four um, kind of sets to get up to 10 repetitions, because that's what I try to get, like we want to try to do it 10 times, three times a day. There, everybody's got like a free pelvic floor like, <laughs> right? treatment. And, and, and being able to, you know, like consciously just think about that rose. Because then, you know, oh my God, like what if I don't do it right? And I'm going to make it worse and whatever. And I tell everybody when they're there, you knew nothing before you came to this appointment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even if you don't even do the exercise right now, you have learned more about your pelvic floor mm. that in your mind now, you're at least you've got attention on it. Instead of not even knowing that it existed and just thinking that you're going to be peeing your pants forever or you're going to have painful sex. So and and the, you know, and then like there's a lot we do like I get them to take a bladder diary so that they're, you know, looking at when they're going pee or what makes you what makes you sore or, you know, like let's in up your water intake because a lot of times that's an issue for people. They're just not mm-hmm. hydrating enough. You know, what does your stool look like? You know, do you need to increase the fiber in your diet because then it's going to be easier access to come out that's going to be less hampering on your pelvic floor. I've honestly and and you know, like knock on wood I've never had anybody and I've been doing, I've been doing pelvic, I took my first training like 20 years ago and then I just didn't really do much of it. I was raising my kids and whatever. And so it's probably been like the last maybe six or seven years that I've really kind of started to get more into it and, Mm -hmm. and am ready at that point in my career to kind of, okay, let's really do this. And I've never had anyone honestly not come back the second time saying, oh my God, I'm so much better. I'm mm-hmm. either, I've got no pain in my back or no pain, you know, sex was so much better. Right. Like, cause now I know how to relax when it's right. sore. Like now I have this tool or wow. Like before I was going pee 12 times a day mm-hmm. and now I'm only going seven. Wow. It doesn't hurt to go number two. Like I've increased my water intake. Like I just, I just feel better or more in control of what's happening down there. Now, you know, no amount of money gives me satisfaction that I get from having a woman come in that was like almost in tears mm. about something they didn't they didn't even know what to yeah. do and to come back in and go wow like I like I feel like I'm gonna make it and you know then they tell two friends and they tell two totally. friends and that that's that's how 
we're going to be able to help everybody that we need to help is just people talking about it and going, well, wow, like physio can help you. Like, why don't you go get a pelvic floor assessment? Are the majority men or women in that work with pelvic Yeah, floor? in all honesty, I don't know of any men pelvic floor therapists. Now, mm. that doesn't mean that there aren't any. In any of the courses and things I've been in and anything I've done it's online, it's all been women. Um and like from a licensure perspective and scope of practice, I'm like, I, I have honestly have no idea. Um, and I mean, I've treated some men. I haven't had to do anything internal, but I mean, I'm certified to do that, mm-hmm. you know, because there's a whole, you know, 50% of the population is men. And when men get older, there's prostate issues and that impacts your whole urological structure. And they, I mean, they have just as many issues. So you know, again, I mentioned my daughter that's in med school and she really wants to be a urologist. And she's like, mom, you really need to look into this and see what you could do. What else do you have to get done so you could help all these men? Right. I mean, you know, I come from a rural area in northern Alberta where there's not a lot of service mm. and there's a lot of people there that need it. So it's kind of like, oh, my God, I wish I was 20. Not like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, yeah. you know, there's just you see all this opportunity and it and it is it's about helping people. But it also is, you know, we need we need to value our time a little bit more. I think as as physios, we're, we just want to help people. And I've always said, man, if I didn't have to, you know, charge people, it would mm. just be so much easier. But that's not realistic, yeah. Yeah. right? So, yeah, I would just look online, um, you know, and, and see what physio clinics there are wherever. And, you know, even say like, I don't really know if I need this. Is there any way that, you know, the therapist could call me back or could I email her or whatever? And, you know, like I would certainly answer an email like that if somebody had sent me an email or take two seconds to talk to people. But, um, oh, um, sorry, I was just looking at the note that (laughs) Carmen was giving us. We have production notes. (laughs) Um, and, And, you know, just go from there. And if, like I, and I, you know, I tell everybody like, if you don't feel you're getting results somewhere, then go somewhere else because everybody has a different way of treating, of right. assessing. And, you know, I, we know now in, in physio for sure. And I think in the majority of healthcare, the, the therapeutic alliance, which is a relationship between the therapist and the patient is like one of the top reasons people get better. Right. You know, like just being feeling comfortable with the person you're with and having that open communication. And, you know, I, I, I would, like I never will acupuncture somebody unless I feel that vibe because it's a transfer of my energy to them. And I don't want somebody to not feel that like and I'll ask that, you know, how do you feel? I mean, I always ask for feedback. Like, what did you think of that? Mm-hmm. You know, like, d- does that make you feel OK? I mean, obviously, we do all of the stuff we learn technically, but in today's you know marketplace and where healthcare sits now you know it's important that people feel empowered and that they feel okay with what's going on and sometimes as healthcare people i think we forget and this was a big thing last night i was like like i can't believe like people don't know all this Mm. stuff and we sometimes forget that and we you know kind of talk over it or oh like i'll just see you like in two weeks and everything's fine okay see you later but You know, they're still like, oh, my God, I can't believe I have a pelvic floor. Mm. So there's a lot of, I think a big part of it is education. And things like this are a way to educate the public. You know, physios are looking for more information to go, you know, do an online course or whatever. They're going to know where to look for it. Right. So, you know, how do we do a better job of just giving information like this out to the public? And for sure, you know, again, where this is educational, but this isn't a one fits all mm. advice. Like I'm just, you know, I'm telling you what my experience has been clinically and kind of what I've learned and what some of the research shows because they're doing more and more research on women's health. Thank goodness. Yeah. Well, up until now, 90, how, how many percentage of doctors were male? And that's not, to, that's not their fault that they're mm-hmm. male. It was just dominated by men and mm-hmm. people don't, don't know what they don't know totally mm-hmm. and you made an interesting this was super interesting to me last night you had said something about up to in 2016 16, i think it was yeah they weren't even really doing including women in well so for, like for drug drug um research and i'm pretty sure i have this right but you know like women weren't included in um research on like drug trials because we had 
hormone like we if right. we had our period and we were on our period when the drug was on but it was like okay but 50 percent of the population yeah. taking the drug is probably going to be skewed right. their results yeah so yeah. you know and I, I may not have that totally right but it's just like now you know they're doing studies on women's health and hormones as they should and, because it's so you know different. our bone density yeah. and muscle mass and you know our mental health and physical health and and it's good like we should but you know when i went to school 30 years ago i went back and did my masters in 2018 and it was so funny because like i hadn't been in school in a long time and you had to have a computer to go to school <laughs> and like everything was done and i had to learn all these things i came in with this big stack of paper <laughs> And like, just felt absolutely, totally clueless. And when the prof stood up at the front, she's like, well, you know, there hasn't, you know, research in, in the in this, like field of physio, like, you know, started like, you know, like less than 30 years ago. And I'm like, oh my God, at that point, I graduated 28 years ago to that time. So I was like, uh -huh. oh my God, there, no wonder I don't know anything about the research because there, we didn't learn anything about that when we went to school. So it's been incre like an incredible journey now as somebody that's old you know, to, to see like, oh my God, like we can, I can actually look up a study on that and right. I can see how things are emerging so we can be better clinicians and serve the public better because you guys probably wouldn't know where to go look for a pelvic floor no study idea. on we didn't like, know, I didn't know it existed even like that was, that's right. not a, mm -hmm. I didn't know I had a pelvic floor, honestly, like that, that was it. I think my no. biggest takeaway from all this definitely has been how, how much our as women how much we are actually connected to our pelvic floor our vaginal area mm -hmm. like just even when it comes to like you said like incontinence or something i can't imagine deal haven't had to deal with that so i can't imagine yeah the thought of not wanting to leave my house because i might pee my pants like that's that's a huge issue and i think that probably affects a lot of women mm -hmm. especially going through menopause and or even like you said like sex hurts or not having a sex drive like that's we put that on ourselves then, right? It has nothing to do with the fact that we're just biologically It's our going own deficiency. Mm -hmm. It becomes our own. Right. Yeah. So, so much of our, almost our self-worth and our, it, it's kind of all affected with everything down mm -hmm. there, right? So in that, and then you, so you start to, oh my mm -hmm. God, yes. it's my own self-worth. Yes. Oh my God, what's wrong mm -hmm. with me? I'm, yes. you know, like, and am I, am I, am I broken? Or like, cause I mean, there's a huge, can I, again, this is just my clinical, what happens here affects here which affects here and those three things together right unless we mm -hmm. can get that energy flowing through where it's like okay i'm i'm this is normal okay it's okay that i don't want to have sex it's not that i'm not loving or whatever mm -hmm. else and i'm going to start working on this from you know if there's an issue but that it's okay or like even if you're having sex and then you go totally dry that's a normal thing mm -hmm. when you're going through menopause mm -hmm. so get some appropriate lubrication right there's nothing wrong with that yeah yeah but this whole like oh my god something's wrong with me i'm all dried up it's and it's got nothing to do with the love you feel for your partner mm -hmm. so for any men that listen to this like this is a thing women and this is how we feel and we feel like it's a deficiency on us right yeah and you know like i mean i'm not a counselor or whatever else but you know we're okay we're just going through this change right. of life and just remember oprah you know like, we're going through this whether we want to or not. Mm -hmm. And some people, depending on what, you know, surgery or what, like, you may be going through it sooner than you wanted to. Mm -hmm. But we're all going to go through it. So, you know, hang on for the ride and know, you know, like, educate yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, read books or, you know, talk to healthcare professionals, you know, search out information online, but always, you know, take that with a grain of salt based mm -hmm. on where the information's coming from and be your own best advocate. Yeah. You know, if you feel you need to go see a pelvic floor therapist, go and see one because we're awesome. You know, if you don't want to, <laughs> great. I mean, you can find information online. A lot of people post a lot of things just on their websites or whatever. If you don't feel that that's right for you or you just don't feel you want to be vulnerable to, mm. because it is. I mean, you right. know, and we don't come in with a headlamp and our microscope <laughs> and, you know, it, it's very, the first assessment for me is very, um, like I just, you know, come in under a blanket. You yeah. know, the just because it, it's too much when when we had to learn our assessments and, you know, you got, I remember the first time I went, there was 12 physios and we were at, um, oh, I can't remember the hospital in Edmonton. Anyway, it was in the Eurogyne lab and literally you got up in the stirrups and 11 people watched <laughs> while the, the teacher did an assessment. On, so we did it for each, each person. person. 
So and at that point, I already had three kids. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, what does it look like down there? Right. Yeah. Like, you know, is there too much hair? Like, oh, my God, I hope there's no toilet paper. You know, like, <laughs> did, did I, I did wipe I, good? Yeah. 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 Like, I mean, did I shower? Properly? Right. Like, yeah. can it smell? Like, I mean, there's yeah. all. So I swore I would never make a patient go through. Because there was nothing wrong with me. And I was yeah. going to learn to do it. And I felt like absolute, like it was shame. Yeah. Because I didn't know. I was like, oh, my God, this is terrible. And I'd already had three kids. Mm -hmm. So imagine somebody that hasn't had any kids. Right. Having, and you come in with your headlamp and your big light. Okay, (laughs) let's take a look. Mm-hmm. It, that's not how that's not how I run my practice it's more discreet than that it's li- it's yeah initially for sure yeah and then by the second time I was saying this last night sometimes people are taking their pants off before I even shut the door yeah you know because they've like it's it if it, something it's works healthy, you're like and it's exactly yeah. and yeah. they become up. more comfortable yes for just sure. comfortable with themselves yeah you know and like look at oh look at like now I can see I when I put the mirror down there I can see when I lift that rosebud up I can see that my pelvic floor is lifting yes yeah good now you know just do that basically for the rest of your life because <laughs> we so, do have to keep working on it so people that maybe are listening are thinking oh I could just probably do my own assessment that's not a thing right no okay. and I you know so we give out a lot like I I mean and I do like educate for sure and and you know I've done videos and stuff on it but I think it's good to find out what you're like down there through an assessment okay. and, you know, have, have your muscles looked at and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you may not think that, you know, your hip pain or your butt pain is related to your pelvic floor. And when you get the, ass- honestly, <laughs> and I think I'm a pretty good physio, I honest to God did not think it, this pain in my hip was coming from my right. pelvic floor. And when that, my partner hit the trigger point, I was like, oh. So well, I'm going to go and you find... You explained it yesterday. If you like, put your fingers... If you feel like your upper traps, like, you know, your neck up here, and you don't, whoops, you don't usually even think of that as being tight until somebody touches it. And then mm-hmm. you're like, oh. Feels so good, yeah. So I've kind of equated that to what your pelvic floor is. Like, you don't know until somebody touches it how, like, sore or how tight or where you might have some of those trigger points. And when you get on one, it's just like, oh. But then once you've had it done once or twice, I was telling you guys last night, I had one of my patients said, oh, I love coming to see you. It's like having a facial for my vagina. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. I'm like, ever since you talked about it, I'm like, I kind of want someone I also want doing a facial things in my pelvic my floor now. <laughs> like it sounds yeah. magical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or even just having someone work with you and talk mm-hmm. to you about these things for more than... 32 seconds mm-hmm. between patients like my doctor is wonderful don't get me wrong but, it, but i don't not feel it's not specialized yeah. and you don't feel like you can actually have a conversation and work through things and figure things out he probably doesn't even know probably not no right? like he's not going to know vaginal health and i mean like to the same degree not to the same degree at all no because no, they're not specialists yeah. period yeah. like yeah. Yeah. I and think it's don't... not their specialty yeah. exactly even yeah. like obstetricians and gynecologists right that's not like and that's why physio is here to do this. We're here as a group of healthcare professionals to offer the best service for the public, right? So, you know, and and I encourage people, like, seek out, you know, like, if you don't feel like you're getting the information from your doctor, then see, you know, like, who else could I go talk to about mm. this or whatever? Because honestly, like, they just don't have time. They can't treat no, everything no. all the time. I think right? people would assume you would go to a gynecologist for this type mm-hmm. of treatment and... Mm-hmm clearly not so physio think like muscles right and your pelvic floor is a muscle I, and i think people don't right? know that a pelvic floor is a muscle that's mm-hmm. part of that issue right i just to me pelvic floor i would have thought was just like tissue mm-hmm. not yeah. muscle no nope. right. so. it's just learning you know an anatomy that's why i thought like you know physios are really good at anatomy muscles bones sure. joints and that's what your whole your, it, it's literally think of it like a bowl like your pelvis is like a bowl so your butt bones your hip bones here and then they join like right in the front underneath your belly button like that's your symphysis pubis it's like comes together in the middle and then you've got like this you know two like pairs of muscles that sit in the bottom of it and then midline is like your butt your vagina and your urethra that's it yeah and so it's and then all these organs kind of sit in that so the more healthy you can healthy and efficient you can make this, you know, muscle structure and then have your muscles, your bones and your joints working together as one. So through physio, can you improve, like if someone does have a a 
bladder that's maybe prolapsing a bit through physio can you Mm -hmm. so we would always start with that like start to try to do like pelvic floor therapy right like teaching people about their pelvic floor getting your pelvic floor like more efficient meaning like and starting to strengthen it Mm -hmm. so a lot of times if you do that if it's so this has been my experience again if we've had like a minor issue that can get greatly improved by doing pelvic floor therapy. Right. Now, you know, until I learned about pessaries yesterday, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't really know anything about a pessary, where you would go to get a pessary, how you would get fitted. I I, Honestly, I just, I mean, and that maybe sounds bad, but I I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Totally. So people don't feel bad that you don't know about pelvic floor therapy because I'm a pelvic floor therapist and I didn't really know about, I knew they were there and I knew it was something, but I knew that wasn't within my scope at that point until I took this training. And so now it's like, wow, like this opens up a whole new part of pelvic floor for people who can't just use pelvic floor, like if they need more right. than pelvic I floor I know therapy. so many, not even like people in menopause, just people that are like friends that have had babies who mm-hmm. have issues with their bladder. They, mm-hmm. they just do, they can't do what they used to do. So something like a pessary, mm-hmm might be the answer right and so it's teaching people how to like put them in and take yeah. them out on their own so they don't have to come in to get it in and out all the time right because it's supposed to be something that's manageable for you at home to then improve your quality of life right under the guidance of like your physician or your gynecologist and then you know if it's a physio that's fitting it and you said you have to be referred by a physician yeah. to fit yeah a pessary but you yeah. can do the fittings yeah. yeah and then that would all like that's all done under like physical therapy so if you have extended extended health benefits that's like a physical Mm. therapy visit right right? so all pelvic floor if it's done by a physical therapist falls under your extended health benefits of physical therapy okay Okay. and every i mean every insurance company is a little bit different on how much they'll cover what the maximum amount is they cover like it's different all over right like i mean all over everywhere but But it's but you could have you could have some coverage okay yeah, it's just covered under the physical physical yep. therapy. So if you have yeah. physical therapy coverage yeah. of any sort and yeah. any left in like that billing year, you can access that coverage for pelvic floor physio and and, and honestly, like I haven't checked, but I'm fairly confident you do a physical therapy assessment to fit a pessary, so that should fall with under mm-hmm. physical right. therapy coverage as well. And not all physical therapists do pelvic floor, right? No, you have to be certified. Okay. And um. Yeah, like there's, it's getting to be more and more, like more and more people are doing it kind of as an adjunct to just doing like straight, like, you know, orthopedic physio where like, you know, bones and muscles, sprained ankles, sore shoulders, like all that. More and more people are starting to do it because it's a really nice way to have a little bit more variety and it's done in a, like usually in a, in a private, like a private clinic setting. Right. Um, Yeah. So it was, I mean, the course I was at yesterday, there were quite a few younger physios which is great right like we need more and more people because then you know like they know more about social media and all that kind of like and you know that you know than me i don't really know how to do all that that well but i think that it's it's becoming something because it's not just like we started this an old person's problem Mm -hmm. you know it's not it's my youngest patient was 19 Mm. wow and my oldest patient has was 82 or 83 well so, so there's it's not an spectrum. age thing it's not an age thing yeah no. yeah and it doesn't have to just do with menopause so you can deal with these issues mm-hmm. at any point well like painful sex is a big one right that was right. the initial the younger one right and she was like well i like me and all my friends just think this is what it's supposed to feel nope. like, wow. like oh wow yeah so, and so that's through work of her pelvic floor she helped well, an education about right you know like what makes you think that the boy knows what they're doing because mm-hmm. right. they don't either totally i have boys like they, yeah. i mean you know who has that conversation yeah so mm-hmm. you know i think it's 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 an interesting thing to just start you know and just bringing up if you're with somebody hey like you know i heard that you know did you know that physio did this and just you know like They tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on and so on. So that people start to understand that physio is not just treating like the outside, you know, or after a car accident or whatever. And, and this is a big thing. There's, and there's a lot of, um, pelvic floor therapists, like they're all over Canada. They're not just in, you know, cities or just, you know, BC or Alberta. They're all over. There's a women's health division, like through our national body. And like, I mean, it's fairly active. Um, 
And, you know, I think that it's going to continue to grow as more and more people come into the profession because this is a caseload of people and we're all about, you know, we want to help people, but you also have to like have a business. I mean, we get paid on the people that we see. So it's a caseload. It's literally like kind of one of those low hanging fruits because 50% of the population is women that have a pelvic floor. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. they don't know they need help with. And it may just be one visit. It may be two. It may be five. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, and, and I always tell people, oh, I don't know if I can afford this. I said, even if you can come one time, yes. because I guarantee you the information I will give you in your first visit will make positive changes in your life. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. this has been fun, you yeah, guys. thank you so much. Oh my much. God, I could sit here all day so, and talk. This is so enlightening. You have no idea. I'm so, thank you, Carmen, for bringing her into who's our room right now. Yeah. We, have, we have a live audience today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not Kyle. Who's writing us notes. Yeah, right. About poop. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you share where people could find you specifically if they're interested in? Yeah. So I um, so I own two clinics, one in Vernon and one in Fort McMurray. And so I'm a pelvic floor therapist at the one in Vernon. And then I have um, other people in Fort McMurray that are. Um, so we're Clearwater Physio, um, Clearwater Physical Therapy. But like, honestly, we're, we're, I mean, it's getting to be more where there's more and more pelvic floor mm-hmm. therapists throughout, like, pro- it's not just in Vancouver, mm-hmm. and it's not just in Victoria, right? You know, like, I mean, we have a clinic in Fort too. McMurray. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, we have, yeah. I think there's like four or five pelvic floor therapists up there. Really? So there's a lot of it, it's, Google it's, search. Yeah, it's yeah. and, and, you know, and, and read their reviews. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Or like I said, like, you know, find because most people now on their website have, you know, who the staff profiles or whatever. And and you can see who does pelvic floor therapy and either email the clinic or call and just say, you know, like, I don't know, like I heard this podcast or I read this thing that said I should have pelvic floor therapy. I don't know anything about it because we get a lot of those calls where people, you know, they don't want to spend the money if it's not something that they needed to come in for. So I'll talk to people and, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah, I think this would work or maybe not, or maybe you should go, you know, see your doctor first, whatever. Um, and I think most physios would take the time to talk to somebody if they really just, you know, wanted some, had questions or wanted advice before booking that visit, yeah. Yeah. right? And, yeah. you know, and then this the whole pessary thing, like, I mean, I haven't even put it on my website or anything yet, but, you know researching that out you know i'm gonna put it like now you know qualified to do pessary fittings so to do a pessary fitting would they come in and you'd actually insert different pessaries to see which one works yeah because you've got okay. to like so you you size people okay. first like okay. there's all these things we have to do and then it's finding the right um pessary for that person okay. based on kind of what their needs are and you know like and which one feels the best. Yeah, I was going to say, in the genetic, like, actual makeup of yep. their body. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And again, like, that's just something, I, like, I literally just, just did learned. the course yeah. yesterday. Yeah. But I can see a huge... I think that's going to be huge. Mm-hmm. I really do. But huge. Like, I didn't know really what they could do. And, yeah. And, you know, like I said, I put it in and don't really have any problems. But I was able to do jumping jacks. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't even feel like I have to pee in my pants. That's yeah. wild. So maybe wow. I did have an issue. Because yeah. I was like, oh, you know, just my pelvic floor is weak or whatever. My pelvic floor is not weak. Right. So I probably do need to have a pessary, oh, hmm. which then I can go back to CrossFit and do skipping and, right. you know, mm-hmm. jumping it's the, jacks. It's the skipping that got me. I was like, oh, after I, I was after I had my third and I had gone, I don't go to the gym now, but I had gone to the gym and I was like, mm, we're not skipping anymore. <laughs> but, you know, and so like how many other moms are not doing that or jumping on a trampoline? A trampoline, I was going to say, they jump on a trampoline. You know, yeah. or like we were talking this morning or for running. bone density and yeah. bone health for women, if you can, you know, jump there's a study that's come out that if you can hop on one leg it has to be i think it's either 25 times or 50 times so you can like hop five times on one leg hop five times on another that's just that's that's a great way to improve and work on your bone density because it's Mm -hmm. like weight bearing exercise Mm -hmm. right but hopping up and down on each leg 50 (laughs) times if you have a pelvic floor issue yes it's like which is the lesser of two (laughs) evils right like do i work on my pelvic floor am i trying to work on my bone density yeah so you know like playing hopscotch so the other day i was showing like that you know like that we called we used to call it like skipping where you would come on like skip on like you'd have two people and they'd put the elastic around their ankles and then we'd hop in and out and spell Mm. mississippi i don't know if you guys ever did that (laughs) But I was showing these students of mine how to do it. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I think I'm going to pee my pants. I'm like, oh, look, I can't do it. Like, I, yeah. well, I can't pee my pants. Like, I'm a pelvic floor therapist. Yeah. 
So, you know, maybe I do need a nice read. Now that I'm said thinking about it. I should probably size myself. Well, we did yesterday. I know what my size is. But, you know, I, I think that just for people to know that, wow, like I didn't know there was actually something I could do about yeah. it. You don't have to just accept it and, oh, well, well that's, and deal our, with that's it. our life now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how it's going to be. Yeah. You can, you can fix mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Or at least make you it better. You can manage it, yeah, right? You it, can, yeah. And we talked about that yesterday. Okay, so maybe the pessary doesn't fix 100% of the problems. But if it helps people like 70% mm-hmm. or 80% of the time. I think people that have that issue, like, even like 10% yeah, is like better, Like any right? change yeah. in quality of life. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, and, and maybe, you know, they have to go back every six months and change the kind of pessary they're using or whatever. Right. Okay. But if it... Are some more strong than others then? Like, or, no, or not really? Not they're necessarily. Same type of, okay. It's just everybody's just a little bit different right Mm -hmm. and depending on what the issue is that maybe has caused the prolapse or Mm -hmm. you know like his age got something to do with it and we kind of didn't get into that all but you know it's just it's just another option yeah for women that maybe they wouldn't have known about otherwise i guarantee you the majority of people have no idea yeah yeah i I agree about most of the things we talked about today so it's sad but we're gonna change it right Mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. One vagina at a time. One vagina right? At a time. That's our, great. There's our episode title. <laughs> One vagina at a time. One sparkling vagina Dine at a time. time. There it I is. love it. Done. Done. Yes. Well, well thank thanks. you so thank much. You. This has been thank super Thank you guys yeah. so much. This was so much yeah. fun. Yes. For like, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was saying, I have this issue where when I'm processing new information, I'm like, <laughs> so hopefully i wasn't too <laughs> no not at all that's why we have velvet you're better at like the quit i'm like huh like i'm just <laughs> taking it all in taking it game. all in yeah just don't watch it on youtube everybody yeah. if you don't want to see mickey's struggling in this one dopey. so yeah all right all right well thank you all right so much. thank you so very nice much you. appreciate it you too yeah. thank you guys so much yeah. it's been fun all right all right bye 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 <laughs>